My name is Dan Sullivan. I'm with the TVM Consulting Group. I'm here this morning with my friend and colleague, uh, Shelby Jarvis with SPX Technologies. We're going to have a conversation tonight about what's going on here in Eden, North Carolina. Sounds good, Dan. Good, good. Well, first of all, the first topic that I'd like to talk with you about, Shelby, is this thing called the SPX Leadership Model. Can you explain to me and to our audience, uh, what, is the, what is the makeup of the model as you understand it today? It's actually an interesting question because uh, the, the executive team set off you know, quite a few years ago, set a long-term vision strategy of what the company wanted to become. And a part of that is about, uh, about how we structure our, our corporation to really set up to enable our businesses closer to the customers to serve the customers. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason that's interesting is because that at all times allows us to, to really, we never become a heavy footprint. We always look at our resource pool at, at not only just who we hire, but, the, but structure it to where it best positions our businesses to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, that's allowed us, we, we've transitioned that into how we think of everything, including uh, CI and how we structure CI. Okay, so so then that application or customer facing, is that what really motivated the creation of the model and how it all fits into the CI initiatives, et cetera? Right. If, if, you, think about, if you think about focusing your talent near the customer, mm -hmm. it means that you always have better insights to what matters to the customer, what satisfies the customer, what they need. Mm -hmm. and, and once you understand that, that can allow you to start making those kind of strategic decisions of how you react to it and how you resource it. And so, you, you know, the way we've positioned that in CI is uh, we actually put the, the bulk of our CI talent yeah. in the business. Mm -hmm. We want them to be there. We want them to understand what the customer sees, what the customer needs, and be able to react effectively. Let me ask you this. The model has been around a while. It has. How has it evolved from its beginning to the circumstance it is today, the way it's taught and the way it's integrated today? You know, it's, it's one of those interesting things. I, the, the model's been around uh, for quite a few years now, mm -hmm. mid-teens, mid 15, 16, okay. something like that. Um, and one of the most interesting things that I say how it's evolved is I think all the components were there, but I think the components are coming together. So um, one of the earliest things was building the structure around what we call our business system. Mm -hmm. Many companies do that. Mm -hmm. And, but, but instead of, if you think about a business system as having many, many gears going around a, a sun gear, mm -hmm. it, it almost turns into silos. Sure. What I see happening at this point in this level of maturity is those silos are breaking. Good. And so if you think about, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most, I think one of the most important, maybe one of the most impactful ones, the way our, the way our human resources thinks about talent and thinks about leadership um, and they think about that everyone has leadership that they offer. Mm -hmm. Some some are, are leading themselves, some are leading others. But at the end of the day, there's behaviors and there's competencies that we can build around mm -hmm. that helps us face the customer, understand the markets, but we can actually scale it to, to the level of, of authority, level of responsibility, mm -hmm. which means that we can better support and, and build our teams to, to be successful. Well, let me, let, me, let me shift it a little bit. Let's talk about the impact and the effectiveness of the model. A little bit, okay, a little at a deeper level. Right. In your perspective, how well has the leadership model been received up and down within the organization? Yeah, so like any any kind of a model like that, it's really you're gonna see the gradient. And that's because we have to allow people to 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 adapt to it, learn it, accept it mm -hmm. at a pace that they can that they can really feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And of course there's a little bit of of we can push a little bit and then relax it to, to try mm -hmm. to foster change, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we still have to respect people are on a journey as well as the company. I see. And, and so it's been a little bit of a, 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 it creates a little bit of a moving journey, if you will. I see. A little uh, bit of a moving target. It, it is. Uh -huh. uh, one of the things that happens, Dan, is, so SPX is on a, a pretty significant journey itself as a corporation. Mm -hmm. Over the last 10 or so years, you know, we've, we've decided strategically of, a, of how we really wanted to be structured. Mm -hmm. And so that means we've had to exit some of our markets. That means we've had to do a lot of sure. M&A work. So sure. that means leadership has changed, sure. right? So even sure. though you have the core, the core teams have been really stable. Mm -hmm. That's a really successful model in that way. Mm -hmm. But as we bring people in, we have to remember they're just starting the journey, regardless of where we are on our journey. Gotcha. And so, Very so important. that's right. So we have to always take a step back, reflect, learn what's working, learn what's not working, mm -hmm. and then reapply those lessons.